Hey everybody, welcome back to Chronic Woodwork. I'm Andy. Today's episode five in my series of videos on how to build a cedar strip canoe. Today we are laying all of the cedar strips onto the mold stations. Should be pretty fun. Here we go. This phase of the project began with laying out all my cedar strips that I purchased from Bear Mountain Boats. So laying out the first layer of strips on either side is the most important. You want to find the center of your strip and align that with the zero mold station or your center mold station. Go ahead and hold the whole strip in place with some clamps and then staple it into your zero mold station. In order to find the fair curve of our shear line, we're going to let the first strip just naturally sag with gravity. I took some measurements from the strong back to the stem mold stations to ensure it was even on each end of the boat. Once I confirmed that the shear line was symmetric on each end of the boat, I went ahead and stapled in the first cedar plank into each of the mold stations. As I mentioned before, the first strip on either side of the canoe is the most important part of this phase of the project. So I need to ensure that they're perfectly even and level on both ends of the canoe. In order to accomplish this task, I clamped my second cedar strip the same way I did for the first and then I grabbed the largest level I had and placed it between my two cedar strips. It's a little bit tricky so you might have to get creative in order to see the leveling bubble. The mold stations kind of get in your way. I ensured that my first two strips were level at each mold station and then just stapled them into the mold station itself and then the cedar strips are actually going to be glued on to the stem that we shaped a few episodes ago. Once I had each side glued on to the stem I took a second to just kind of lean back and observe and look for any signs of trouble, but I was pretty satisfied. For all the remaining strips, it's relatively straightforward. You're going to run a bead of glue inside the cove, so ensure you install your strips cove side up. Canoe Craft recommends purchasing a syringe. It's going to allow you to lay a nice even bead of glue. Then just simply bring the next strip over, place the bead into the cove, make sure you provide a little bit of downward pressure to make sure you have enough glue contact and then you're going to staple the second strip into each mold station. After you've glued the next strip onto the stem, go ahead and just hack off any excess. From here on out, the process is pretty repetitive. You're going to cut a strip, take it over, uh, run a bead of glue, and just staple it into the station molds. As you make progress, you'll remember that we only shaped the first six to eight inches of our stem. Now's the time uh, to take a chisel or whatever tool you're comfortable with and further shape that stem. I used a piece of scrap to ensure I had the correct shape before bringing the actual strip over. Once you've got the correct angle, just bring more strips over and keep working. I've reached a pretty significant milestone on my canoe build here. I've completed all the full length cedar strips that run from stem to stem Moving forward, I need to complete the rocker. That's that curved shape at the end of the canoe. It's kind of the traditional look, the, the curved look. So I'm going to plank from the shear line to the top of the stem uh, to provide that curved look. And then I'm also going to close in the gap on the canoe. So to do that, as you can see, I really don't have room for another plank on the far side. So the way Canoe Craft teaches it is to just commit to one side and you're just going to plank well past the center line, a couple inches past the center line of the bottom of the boat or the keel line, and then we're going to cut a straight edge down the full length of the canoe and then come back from the far side and custom fit planks until they meet in the middle. That's my way ahead. It's going to be pretty challenging. Here we go. As you start closing the hull of your canoe, I found it to be a lot more difficult. Uh, so it's really nice to have an extra set of hands. Luckily, my wife is a champ and offered to come down and help me, despite the fact that she was about eight and a half months pregnant. Thanks, dear. I kept on planking until I was well past the center line of the hull, or the keel line. I used the paracord and two brad nails to mark a straight line from stem to stem. I then used a straight edge and a pencil to turn that string line into an actual pencil line, and then I was going to use a circular saw to cut a straight line straight down the middle of the canoe. It's pretty nerve-wracking, but it's the fastest way to do it, and Adam from A Guy Doing Stuff did it, so it was good enough for me. When it comes to using the circular saw, just err on the side of caution and cut off less rather than more. If you need to come back with a chisel and uh, get closer to, the, to your line, so be it. I was extremely nervous, but when it was all said and done, I was very satisfied with the result. Dixie also greatly enjoyed it because she got to chew the most 
expensive sticks of her life. Now came the extremely difficult part of planking the hull. It's the part I've been kind of dreading uh, since reading about building a canoe. So I use a scrap to get the rough angle for one end of my strip. I cut that angle on the strip before bringing it over to the canoe and then used a block plane to shape it into place. Once I was satisfied with one end, I worked my way down to the other end. You really have to crank on these strips to get them into place. Uh, I just marked the angle as best I could, cut it, and then shaped it down with the block plane again. I had some great results and I had some really terrible results that basically equated to me using glue and sawdust. I'm not very well versed in hand tools, so I just chalked it up to a learning experience. I found it easiest to find the fit for one end of the strip, staple two or three mold stations towards the other end, and then leave the other end loose hanging. That way you can cut the angle and then shape it as needed before applying the remainder of the glue. And slowly but surely, you're gonna make your way towards the keel line. When it came time to fit the final plank, sometimes known as the whiskey plank, I took a little bit different approach. I, I took a large piece of paper and used it to find the rough shape of the plank I needed to fit and I honestly thought it worked pretty well. I knew the final gap was a little bit wider than an individual cedar strip, so I glued two strips together and kind of came up with a little jig to help me glue them and dry them in somewhat of a curve. I then fixed my piece of paper onto these two planks and cut them out on my scroll saw. I made sure to err on the side of caution and cut this piece quite a bit bigger than it actually needed to be. This allowed me to take it over to the canoe and then use the block plane to shave it down and really sneak up on a nice fit. It took several iterations and test bits, but I finally got it in uh, with some degree of success. There were some actual visible gaps that I ended up filling with sawdust and glue. I will admit that I was a little bit bummed, but it's my first time doing it. You can't expect perfection. In order to celebrate the whiskey plane going in, I had a glass of whiskey and just took a moment to enjoy the process of the boat before moving on to planking above the shear line. I tried to provide a close up here where you can see where some of my planks were a real snug fit that I was very proud of and other places I had some pretty big gaps. Once again, just part of the learning experience. The last step in this phase of the project was planking above the shear line. This was actually incredibly easy. I just took a measurement, uh, cut some strips to size and then just kind of ran a bead of glue into the cove and then pushed it up onto the bead above it. I used staples where possible and then just some blue painter's tape whenever I ran out of room. My parents actually came for the weekend uh, to come see my wife and I and the new baby obviously so I was really happy my dad was able to help me out with the boat. Uh, it was really cool getting to catch him on film and that's really going to do it for this phase of the project. Next time we're going to be uh, prepping the hull, pulling the staples and prepping the hull for fiberglass and we still need to attach the outside stem. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.